So please join Joni and me as we welcome Basil Howard Brown. Okay, so are the days of revival over? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, back in the 90s, we saw a great move of the Spirit of God. The difference between the 90s and now is the heart of man. Yes. Um, the hunger, the excitement and the hunger that were in the heart of man back then is not there today. No, now, not everybody. Obviously, we're, we're still hungry. We're still pressing in. And there's a great remnant of people that love the move of God and have never backed off. But... You know, back back in the 90s, it was like a it was like a party. Everybody was showing up. Everybody was hungry, thirsty for the touch of heaven. It was a fresh wave that was happening, and I believe it's about to happen again. I believe we're about to see a move of God greater than what we saw in the 90s. Uh, I believe God's about to do something in America. So, what can people do if they want to see revival? in their own life, in their family, in their church, what do they need to do? You know, it just comes down to a personal hunger. Um, wanting God more than anything else. You know, we, we tend to structure our churches and, and tend to structure the things that we do for God, um, you know, the way man wants it. And at the end of the day, it's really not what man wants, it's really what God wants. You know, so I, I'm just of this frame of mind. When we show up in a meeting, we welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come do whatever you want to do. This is your meeting. I'm just the vessel or the, or the carrier of the anointing, and you do whatever. I'll do whatever you want to do. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit shows up, and He moves in such a powerful way. You know, last night we had a meeting, and we've been at Calvary Cathedral here in Fort Worth since um, the 23rd of October last year. Wow. Uh, just showed up on a Sunday morning to go visit with Pastor Bob. And um, he invited me to come Sunday night. He said, would you preach Sunday night? I said, sure. And then after Sunday night, we were sitting talking. And he said, what are you doing Wednesday night? I said, well, nothing. He goes, you want to come preach Wednesday night? And then after Wednesday night meeting, he said, what are you doing Sunday night? And it's been like that, <laughs> it's been like that since October last year. And for example, say last night, I mean, we, we just had, I mean, every meeting, is, it's, it's been a blowout. The power of God's been falling. And, you know, we, we had from anywhere from, from a street person to a, to an eye surgeon to a, a business administrator to a whole family getting touched by the power of God. I mean, God's really doing something. And, you know, if you had said to me, and even for Pastor Bob, uh, if you had said to us, you know, 10 years ago, come have revival on a Sunday and a Wednesday, we would have looked at you and went, that's not even possible. Because, you know, we're used to doing, you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out of revival meetings. But let me tell you what, God's doing something special and it's very different. And it's like our Sunday night and our Wednesday night overlap one another. So for example's sake, we do a Wednesday night, we show up Sunday night, and it's like we pick up from where we left off Fabulous. on Wednesday night. And God's doing something powerful. Well, I can just tell you that pastors Bob and Joy Nichols of Calvary Cathedral in Fort Worth, Texas are two of mine and Joni's favorite people in all the world. I don't know of anybody that has a heart for people, no. a heart for God, a heart for revival any more than Amen. those two, Joni. They do. They really do. And we're going to show a clip, I guess, of you from um, Calvary Cathedral. Of course, uh, we can remember the 90s when your brother, Rodney Howard Brown, was there and had such great meetings, not only there, but also in other parts of the DFW area. We love uh, Rodney and Adonica. Now, are you the older or younger brother? I am the younger one. You're the younger. Yeah, two years younger. And you're taller than Rodney. A is. little taller, and my wife says I'm the better looking one. Sorry, okay. sorry, Rodney. Right. Can you beat, <laughs> sorry, Rodney. Can you beat Rodney in golf? <laughs> you know, that's one thing I can't do, no. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, tell us, but right before we see this clip, Basil, tell us about how did you come in, come to know the Lord and really feel that call into full-time ministry and it's kind of neat that you and Rodney both do that. Well, you know, obviously we were very blessed because we were born into a family of believers. My mom and dad were very strong believers. And so, you know, I responded at the age of probably four years old to an altar call in a Pentecostal church back in South Africa. And, and uh, actually, in fact, my brother and I, we responded many times to the altar call, uh, <laughs> you know, probably about a hundred times before we, we actually got it. But, um, you know, so we grew up in a Christian home and uh, saw God move in powerful ways. 
and just knew, I mean, even when I was at school, I would tell the teachers, look, I don't really need to learn this subject because I won't need it because one day I'll be preaching. And uh, so that was my, my thoughts, you know, and I was right. I've never used that subject. But anyway, uh, you know, it, it's just I feel sometimes God has his hand on a family. And, um, you know, we were just crazy enough to believe him and, you know, go wherever he wanted us to go. And and that's we we you know, God brought us to America in in the 90s as missionaries. And and yeah, we are. Very OK, blessed, you know? so why do you all have two last names? Howard hyphen Brown. You know, it's one last name. It is? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Some people call me Howard. They call me, oh, Mr. Howard, how you doing? Or they call me Mr. Brown. Um, you know, they get my, main, my name mixed up. They call me Brazil, and it's really Basil. <laughs> but, uh, or they call me Basil. The Americans like to call me Basil. Uh, but anyway, um, we re- I respond to anything. They've even called me Rodney before. And I, I just go, yeah, absolutely. How are you doing? <laughs> that is great. <laughs> well, let's go to Calvary Cathedral in Fort Worth, Texas, and see Basil Howard Brown ministering under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do you get joy without the anointing? Because listen, the joy of the Lord is not, it's not man-made. We can't make people happy. And, and, and we, can, you know, we can say a few funny things, but you'll laugh a little bit, then it's gone. But the joy, it'll just keep going. And tomorrow morning when you wake up, ha, 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 Monday. Tomorrow's Monday. You can be excited about a Monday. Because the joy of the Lord's on the inside of you. People go, oh my God, tomorrow's Monday. Can't wait till Friday, praise God. What's wrong with Monday? It's the day the Lord's made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. You know, Monday's a great day. It's a great day to be blessed. It's a great day to see breakthroughs. It's a great day for God to bring provision in your life. Monday is a great day. Especially when you're full of the joy of the Lord. You can take what you get here tonight, go out Monday and start releasing the anointing. Hello. I believe God's calling the Christians in these last days to be a lot more bolder than what we've been in the days gone by. And I feel a shift in the nation of what's happened this last week. I feel a shift. I feel like everything that's evil is going to be brought to naught. And the Christian has to rise up in these last days full of the Holy Ghost and go do something for the kingdom. Well, Calvary Cathedral is such a great church. Pastor Bob Nichols has been there for decades now. So, Basil, when are the services, the revival services? Well, we uh, this coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and then again on Sunday night at uh, 6.30. And, you know, we don't really know when it's going to end. It's just kind of week by week right now and as it has been from the beginning. But uh, we don't really see any, any end in sight, you know. So and so, God. and it's very easy to find. It's right there on Interstate 35 on the east side of the freeway. <coughs> what about for pastors that are watching? You talked about individuals that they need to become hungry and thirsty for the Lord. If a pastor is out there praying, saying, God, send revival to my church, what does that pastor need to do? You know, I think I think he has to put aside his agenda. I think that's the, the, the control that we as human beings like to have is one of the biggest keys that actually control the Holy Spirit out of the situation. So I think what we have to do is we have to put aside our agenda and say, God, whatever, what do you want to do? How do you want to do this? And then let's let the Holy Spirit come because, you know, there's something that God wants to do. He wants to touch his people. Um, you know, I'm very grateful and thankful for what God's done in our nation over the last six months. And I believe God is, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like there's a sleeping giant that has been awoken. And when I say the sleeping giant, I'm talking about the church. I believe this is the time and the hour of the church to rise up in the fullness that God has for yes. us and carry the fires of revival and the anointing of God. And let's see the nation. Let's see this great nation shaken by the power of Almighty oh God. My God. And so, so if pastors just put aside the agenda and say, God, you do whatever you want to do, we'll do it the way you want it. And let me tell you what, when God shows up, it's out of the box. It's Amen. not the normal. It's not the same old, same old. And I'm telling you right now, God will, God will shape this nation and shake this nation. And once again, America will be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And I believe God's going to raise up missionaries and send them all over the nation and all over the world carrying revival and the fires of God 
because you know we I believe we're on the verge of of a great a revival and then we're going to see the greatest awakening where the world's Thank awoken God. to Jesus well we need it I want to invite Todd White to come and join Basil today on the program just live just come right over here can we do that just come on over he, he'll walk right in front of the camera all right, they switched pretty good there. That was good. They did. <laughs> now, if you want to get these two great men of God to pray for you, I would suggest quickly getting on the phone. We've got three minutes left in this program. So, Basil, take a minute and encourage the people for revival right before we have you and Todd pray. All right, let me let me say this. For those that are out there, and listen, especially in the Metroplex, we're right here right now. God's doing some great things at Calvary. And, and some of you might have been hurt. Some of you might have been in revival in the 90s, but you're hurt right now and you need a touch of heaven. Let me tell you what, come out with, with, with the expectation that God is going to touch you in a very powerful way. Because He will. Yes. On a Wednesday night, on a Sunday night, come and be a part.